welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Terry on Tammy Down. Tammy, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm glad we could do this finally. Track you down. You're like when the last one just literally is breaking down the albums and stuff. And, and um, and when Greg was on, he really talked about the first album and, and the transition to the second album, how fantastic it was. And, and and I want to talk about some of the early stuff, and then we'll end up on some of the, the newer stuff, which is really good too. Um. But one of the first things I want to say is like diversity in each album has changed so much. Like it's it's like every album was like night and day. It's just growth. You know what I mean? We were kids when, when we started doing that first album. We didn't even have enough songs for the record. You know what I mean? So it's like, let alone just we're still learning how to play our shit. And I didn't even really want to be a singer, but I became one because couldn't find one. So. But you didn't play guitar, right? Yeah. You know, even back then, when you playing guitar, I mean, you didn't play in the band. But well, you I wrote on the guitar. Yeah, I wrote most of the shit. So it's like I wrote most of the songs on guitar. Then I bring them into Greg and Brent and stuff. And, and of course, we co-wrote songs as well. Right. But there's a bunch of songs I wrote everything to as well. But but I, I wasn't like I had no lead player. I just writer, songwriter, you know, and just play the rhythms and the riffs and shit. So. Well, you know, it's always hard to tell, like, who, like, because sometimes some singers will be like, they just hum it out. They don't play guitar. So it's always interesting to see, like, you know, when you actually wrote it, you wrote it on guitar, you know, with the cardboard chords. And I see you're, you're into programming. And obviously, it keeps expanding over each album with you. Um, but the first album was very, very just, a, yeah, kind of like a dirty rock and roll, I guess, stonesy, kind of Aerosmithy influenced album sort of sounding. Totally. It was all the shit we were into. And like I said, we were kids. So we were only together 10 months. As a Just, band, by the time we been. got, by the time we got a record deal, you know, we played like I don't even know, know how many shows, maybe eight, nine. <laughs> That's crazy if you think about it. It is. I've just been doing this stuff because I'm getting ready to, you know. Well, actually, we started started doing a book, and it's just like these timelines of this shit. That's what I've been putting together. Shit happens so fast, so fast. And at a young, we're all young and just the whole scene in LA with us and GNR and LA Guns and Jet Boy and all the bands at that time, that was a time that was there and then gone. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't a lingering long period of time. No. It was pretty fast. It was, everything happened, boom. Next thing you know, we're on tour and we're doing a second record. Then a third record, we're out with Ozzy and we're Motley. But it's all after like five years, everything's just is gone, you know, pretty much or close to it or whatever, seven years or whatever. But it flies by like that, too. And, and it got weird for music, but like, so, but you survived and you guys had some bumps and you broke up for a while and you got back together and then there are different versions. But then everyone kind of got back on the same page again and you kind of moved forward. The first album, like I said, the songs are pretty basic, but you know, it was amazing. Actually, Greg said, quoted basically the first album was basically like a demo. That's why he kind of phrased it, you know. It was because you know? I mean, like, we we're coming up with, I mean, Greg always said that it's like, it's like a demo, you know. What I mean, <laughs> I thought it was Greg's quote of our first record, which it was yeah. because we were 10 months old. We we did one demo before that with a few songs and in the first time in the studio down on Melrose. and. And then, like ten months later, not even ten months later, like five months later, we're even, you know, recording a record for Electra. You know what I mean? And you're so, still doing the songs today, too. Some of them, yeah, you know, still playing, yeah, still playing them after all these fucking years. That's just like, insane. So, what well, was amazing? The first was the, the first big jump was when you from when that album to the second album. And I know, you know, you guys practice like almost every day, and it's not like you guys put the effort in. But I don't think you can sit back down. You look at the sound of that first album, the second album. When bands have a first and a second album, usually you can kind of see a continuity. I it was almost like two bands. It was like <laughs> it's been like playing for years. You know, it was night and day. That's what that's what a young man and touring nonstop for the year does to you. You come back a different band. A band I've noticed that with other bands too, and I've heard that many times when we came back home to play. After we yeah. were gone, after we were out with, you know, Alice Cooper and David Lee Roth and just coming back, they were just like, you guys are a different band because we were just kind of sloppy, stonesy, 
Johnny Thunder's right. rock band when we were playing the clubs. And that was a short period of time because it was easy to play sloppy and be that way. It was and it was fun. We had no right. idea we we're gonna come back tight, a tight motherfucking band. That's what happened. And then we did that. And then we went in to start working on Wake Me, and it was just us, you know, doing it. We we went through like four different producers, just de- you know, checking them out and Electra checking them out. We we'd like one, and Electra would be like, nah. And then Electra like one, and we'd be like, nah. Then we finally we settled on. We, we met John and it just everything clicked, Jansen. And yeah. just, and he, we went in to do the record. We didn't change anything that we were doing. None of the arrangements, none of that shit for the Wake Me. That was all us. That was all us working out, working out the shit at, at Mates every day, doing our stuff. When John come in, he just, you know, he came and put his touches on the, in the studio when we did it and brought in some people and, just to background vocals and piano and Jimmy Z on the harp and that shit. He was the maestro and John is awesome. And he just, and he made it sound killer, but that was us doing learning, you know, learning how to play our shit better, you know, all the guitars, the Mark, the drums and just, and but Eric was always, Eric was always a great bass player. Eric was always better at bass than any of us at our shit. You know what I mean? More proficient than the other musicians at the time. Just, he was just solid. He When he joined the band, too, that made us a better band. Because Kelly was originally with us. But we were, then again, yep. like I said, we were a very young band. We, you know, we weren't really that tight. You know what I mean? And just having a solid, you know, Mark was on heroin. So you just add a heroin drummer with a rock and roll Kelly Nichols bass player. You know, you, <laughs> it took Eric to get Mark in shape a little bit, you know what I mean? In terms of tightening it up and then just us being on the road and Mark being off drugs helped us become a better band, you know? And right. So when we came in to do Wake Me, we had some issues with Mark slipping back off his stuff, but that was, that's just the way it goes when you're in a band with a junkie, you know what I mean? We all loved him, but we fucking, you, know, you can't babysit him 24-7, so it's like, it is what it is. He got gigged on the, on the, uh, the mail thing, right, too? That was the... Yep, right out of the bat, on the Wake Me run. We were out with Danger, like, uh, Danger Danger, and right before the Motley tour and stuff. I remember when they came out, I remember thinking, like, I think a lot of people were like, I guess you can get arrested for that. No one ever thought, like, about shipping heroin through the mail. It was like, it was just, it wasn't even a thought that people thought about. <laughs> I didn't think of it. I wasn't a heroin addict, yeah. but I found no, out I, about I, it I, pretty fucking quick. But you never even thought about it. Like, on any, any like, who would be shipping it through that? It was, it was, it was like such a weird thing to hear, you know? It's yeah. a shame, of course. Yeah, it you was know, pretty, a, apparently but... a pretty popular thing to do when you're a drug yes. addict, shipping drugs from LA to the Midwest. So, you know. But then you got you, know, you got another good drummer, and you guys always you know, kept kept going. And um, with with this album, did you guys do for Awake Me? Did you have the full twelve songs? Did you have more? Like yeah, written, and then you cut no, some out. Pretty much, that was we. Pretty much were just. I mean, there was a bunch of other stuff that was just not recorded. What we recorded right. for the record was what was there. You know what I mean? I think what we do, we did an extra one for the japan or something i can't remember we did oh yeah there yeah, yeah we did what like now let's see i'm well please hear what's on we did some song. stuff on we did some stuff for whip that was yep. bonus shit like too tight and charge me up and stuff yeah that, that one we wrote cool. a bunch of songs for but i was just like man i don't i don't want to spend all this time i want to do what we did with wake me it's like we went in there with our songs that we put together and they were good songs, and we fucking recorded them. You know, what I mean, they, they crushed. You, did but it. you had full, you had full, full support of Electra. That probably didn't hurt the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're totally. They were the ones trying to get us the right producer for the second record too. And then when we, I don't know how John came into the picture, but I'm glad he did. It was just, he was a great guy too. It's a huge so, sound. Like, it's a huge, huge sound. The band just sounded so, so big. You know, from that and we production. Did, we, yeah, we, and we didn't really. You know, we got some better gear. You know, we had pretty much shit gear when we started. But having tour support from Electra and being able to go out on the road, we had to get better stuff to go out and play and yeah. sound good with these other bands. So by the time we came back from wait for wait to do Wake Me, 
we are already right working on songs like slip of the tongue and little dove and shit that stuff was done before we you know not done but songs were written before we even went out you know and we come back home between some of the tours like cooper or, and david lee roth and we'd be working on new stuff because we're all fucking young and excited and just, just do a new song now it takes me eight years to do a new song but back then it'd be like <laughs> eight hours so it's like the lyrics that we were even different even that the topics were different now like even if it was tongue-in-cheek i mean and you went to a lot of them but they weren't the same type of titles that were a lot of the bands at the time either though you know even like arizona indian doll or ain't no way around like crying shame they're a lot different than you know i'm not gonna make any digs at bands because yeah. i enjoy the music yeah, too yeah. but the, no, exactly. I, I, the the diversity of it was also kind of fun i always you know, try to make wise. it like not cliche but sometimes there's not avoiding it you know what I mean? And just like, that's just the way I always did it. And even still to this day, now I find more myself sometimes more of a rut because I can't, and I'm older because I'm not like, getting fucking hammered because I'm sober too. So it's like, that's a lot of early songs, especially Newly Dead shit and some of the other stuff. It's like a little more through well, the yeah. crazy partying period of my life. So it's like, yeah, writing stuff about different stuff when you're almost 60 now. So it's like, those were good lyrics over back then because you weren't even those i think about it, now you'd be getting those kind of a little more introspective you know pulling weeds I mean, yeah, everything was kind right of cheek, but they were kicking you know. back kicking back on the lazy boy and uh fucking <laughs> staring at the clouds and someone's gotta write a song about know. how much time people spend on netflix or, or amazon prime trying to find a movie but then after 20 minutes just say forget it and just go to bed that's that's gonna be the next exactly. big one Oh yeah, I can write tons of that. I have plenty of experience with all that <laughs> how shit. How many times, well. of, how many hours have been wasted of doing that? Right? I'm like, just forget. Yeah, it. how many yeah, how many hours I spent on Amazon searching for the right something? Yeah, and then you're like, uh, oh, two hours. I can't say with two hours. Like, that's find something for That's too long of a movie. I gotta gauge your time. Yeah, it's getting old, man. Um, exactly. So, at the point of whip, now where were you guys at with the label? Was that when the label was starting to break free from you guys? We're getting ready to drop it. No, we were you totally. Guys? Whip, we were told it was all everything was fine until we looked till we tour. went on the road. Till we till about not even right away. I mean, we went out with who did we start with? We went the out Kiss. with uh, we went out with Kiss, and then we, we went out with Ozzy, we went out with White Snake. So I mean we had some good tours, and it wasn't until like towards the the end of Whipped where it was all sudden just like we'd be in I think it was like the Ozzy tour. That was Ozzy or the Kiss tour. I can't remember which one was first. I have it in my timeline thing somewhere. I in thought I heard Greg say Kiss, but I don't. I don't. I'm not sure, but uh, I think we went from Kiss to Ozzy. But I, okay, we went from someone to Ozzy because it was like we we're out. We we're like doing Ozzy and like kill it. That was <laughs> awesome. That was so much fun. That was on Ozzy's No More Tours tour. So oh. yeah, what the fuck ever, Ozzy? Part one yeah, bullshit. That was a part bunch one. of bullshit. Exactly. Part seven. Part one of seven. But uh yeah, I'm not sure. So I can... well, I mean now that album actually talking about the bass. That album has a lot more bass in it. It's a lot more funky, much more of a groove to it. Kind of let Eric off his leash a little bit. Just because wasn't my doing really. But it was like John, that was kind of like the thing. But back to that, back to the the Electra being yeah. behind. They were out with until we were out on one of the roads, and like all, we've been touring for since fucking eighty seven. So it's like this was like ninety two, whatever. And yeah, there there would be we'd be in like Chicago and Texas and stuff, and the Electra rep wasn't there because there were there wasn't one. They had gotten rid of like 75, I think it was 50 to 75% of their staff, Electra did, oh. during that period of our time, you know, when we were out on the road. At the beginning, it was killer, you know, then also it was like, we're so to Oh, they got fired. And they're laying everybody off. I'm like, great. So that's that's how it was us for us on the road at the end. And it was like, who are we going to? And then finally, by the time we were done with it, we were like, we weren't expecting to see anybody and then by then we got home and then we got the hammer so it was like that it was like oh electra's dropping yet like, well i was gonna say coming it, it's a good album it, once again it's very diverse though i mean songs like jack the bastard and like nowhere i mean it's the chorus are different to get more more um 
almost like gospel vocals in the background sometimes. It's just yeah, we did a we experimented with more shit. John John had a little bit more hand in in whipped than in wake me because when we like I said when we went and did wake me we went and did it as is you know that was bare bone faster pussycat yeah calling the all the arrangements all that shit. John wanted us to do a lot more songs for Whipped, and it was kind of, I don't know, it was just kind of more mu- muddying it up a little bit. And fucking, to that was me, I didn't want to, and plus, I just didn't want to. I, there's a lot of riffs that are certain songs that I just didn't jive on, you know what I mean? That I just, I'd rather work on something that gets me going than ask. Supposed to pen a bunch of lyrics and melodies to grooves I didn't really like that I didn't feel like comfortable with. So right. there's a few times during that record where I was just like, ah, my hands are up. I just not coming in tomorrow. So it's like I'm gonna work on my own shit or take a day off from it. That we, it kind of got that way because it was drawn out a long time. Pre-production was long. We were working on like 30 songs and really wow. only 10 of them really songs. There was like just riffs that were turned into shit you know what i mean so it was like i don't know it was a little rough but by the by that time where it was like well, i'm gonna do lyrics for these songs and this and this and we'll do a couple extras and that's it let's just record these fucking songs i don't want to sit in this pre-production room for another two weeks or another month you know let's get it done and move on to the next one too you know what i mean it's like yeah that's just well, the way that, I felt. So. Well, I mean, it seems like historically that's the danger of other bands. Every every album is more time production and production. It kind of takes away different songs. I didn't want to. Each I, album. I just and the ones that we the ones that were pretty much on that record were the ones that we started with. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. the other ones kind of fell by the wayside because they weren't good enough. I I thought. I mean, usually back then too, I was usually a pretty good judge of what was kind of hooky and what was going on there's still some stuff on it that's like i'm like i wish i could have wish i would have did this but, but i was too busy fucking working Doing on this other <laughs> song that we didn't even yeah. use you know what i mean so but that's all right it is what it is it's like the drawings time to move on to another one you know what i mean so i think looking back i think it holds up better now even looking back over time compared to all, like when you look at all your albums i think it stands up even better over time yeah there's know? some cool shit on it it's like there's like some stuff i forget because i i don't sit there and listen to my shit all the time so it's like once in a while i'll go back you know i'll go through stuff too like we'll figure out what what should we bring out and play you know what i mean that, that we haven't played ever you know what I mean, or something like that. And I'll listen to some of this stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, that was pretty actually pretty cool song. It's like, just because it's your own shit, you just kind of like you don't think of it as people. Go, oh, I really love that song, and it's like they're usually just cool. Thanks, you know what I mean. But yeah, I think one of the hard yeah, parts was... also is you guys came out at a time where you know I always say it's like everyone falls in love with a band during their prime time of like into high school, their freedom years before they start getting jobs or college or whatever. And then they latch on to those albums. And those albums for you is either your first and second and part of the third maybe carryover. It depends on how old they were. So when that always gets carried along with a band no matter where they go. And like, <laughs> as those are the albums that people love because that was their emotional years that kind of grabbed onto them. And that whole so no matter- scene was the, uh, yeah. that whole scene then too, you know what I mean? That that period of time when we were too as well yeah. in our teens. And early twenties, so that's like yeah. So your your tween years before you're actually an adult. Yeah, I mean, like you think about saying. your favorite, like yeah, your favorite like Aerosmith albums. I mean, for you to age group, it really depends on what year you're at. You know what I mean? You know when it was done. Exactly. Um, Growing actually, up, done, done done with mirrors. I really loved. I think maybe because oh, me too. Up. I love that. Rock. I love yeah. that record too. It was great. That was like I mean, me too. Top, I was like I was three. 17, 18 when it. Yeah. I loved it. That was great. I was playing as I heard that album. Yeah. Rain. yeah, those were all the good albums back then. I mean, and and it's not just gonna get ahead, but I think I always noticed I felt you had a and I've noticed it more in your newer music, an alternative thing. I hear sometimes even maybe a little bit maybe the cure would the cure could be an influence on you. Oh, they always like, lyrically have. melody. Okay. Yeah. I, I love the career myself, but I'm like, and I listen Cure, to it, I Love and Rockets, song. yeah, Bauhaus and that stuff. I loved all that stuff too since high school. So, 
the more well, I got turned on to a lot of it right after high school when I moved to San Diego first through my friend Lynette and a couple my buddy Mike and some other friends turned me on to all Susie and the Banshees and The Cure and all that the original alternative music. That's yes. that was the original yeah, alternative okay. back in our days. That was what was alternative music was the cure and even the cult as Southern Death Cult and yep. all that Echo and the Bunny Man and all that stuff. All of them. I mean, it was no. I mean, yeah. Any, any you know any any of those bands back then, whether they were more poppy, but even though they're still alternative, you know, it was still were, can, you know, yeah, especially the church, the church under the Milky Way Sun, the church oh, album, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the album, whole album, Reptile, it's just bananas, you know. For yeah. sounds, we got um, to play a few songs, a few shows early in our early club days with some of the bands like Flesh for Lulu and 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 uh, who else? Specimen and uh, Gene Loves Jezebel and yep. So there's a few others too. That the Roxy through Golden uh, Golden Voice, like Gary Tovar, fucking. Gave us wow. a chance. We were we were opening up for all these bands that weren't nothing like us, but that's how we got like kind of a good following. Quick, you know what I mean? We had we had different people. We play open up for these other bands, and all of a sudden we were you know we do shows like with Poison or Guns and Roses and on the early days of our stuff too. But we do shows like that with these other bands. By the time we we're by a few months in, we were headlining our own shows with this kind of kind of a diverse crowd. You know, we had people, other different styles of music people that were right kind of in, into us. So, just well, you guys sound kind of different, a fun though. band. You know, I mean, you sounded way different than Poison. Like it was a way different sound. You know, just I mean, we're just to compare you guys, we're just a right. young rock band from L.A. from Hollywood, just that liked the Stones and Johnny Thunders, and that was our shit. You know. What I mean? And, the, yeah, and we got over. grew, we grew and got to listen to more shit. Uh, that was my a lot of my input, you know what I mean. Greg was always into other stuff, and but I, I wrote most. Of I know the Greg likes ZZ Top know. a lot. I know it, what's it, uh, one of the songs he pointed out how similar it is to a ZZ Top riff, and I never realized it till afterwards. Uh, and, um, I don't know. I don't on, know. A, on a second album, I, don't, I gotta think about it. I'll tell you if I can think about it. I'll send you an email. Oh, forgot what it was. I was like, oh my god, I didn't even hear that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe uh, gonna walk. That's kind of easy. It might be. I don't know. I have to think about it. But it's really funny. I was like, I didn't even think about that. Because he's a big ZZ Top fan. I think gonna walk sounds kind of easy ish. Yeah, the riff on it. Yeah, but it's, you know, say it's a good album. So th that actually leads me to the point. So after that album, you guys had belted um, with Muckled and belted. I'm saying backwards. But that um, was just all that was an EP ish. Was, uh, that was nonstop CD singles. What right. it was not nonstop, so it was just belted, buckled, and booted, and and that had uh, Bane. Yeah, we had done because we had done "You're So Vain" in between the two albums for the. Electors. I love that version. I remember uh, that came out, and that was us too. That was just us. That was a we great we song. produced it ourselves. We just went in with I think Ryan. I'm not sure who. I can't remember. I got to look at the credits, but so everything's a blur. But we just went in there with our engineer and just just banged that out like in a day. So it was, where we spent two days. We did the drums and shit, and then we did the guitars and vocals the next day. So it's. I was super surprised to hear that come out. It, it, the the whole was the, the um, it was, a, it was the Electra series. The uh, I what it was called now it had all the bands it, on it. It was Rubiot. It was the fortieth yes. anniversary. Yeah. But that was cool. that. we were we were originally supposed to do um, Lust for Life, but. They were like, uh, they were on the fence with some different stuff. And I was, they were like, what do you think about your Sylvain? Because all it was was new artists doing old Electra artist songs. Right. So that was the obvious choice for us was Iggy. So, right. but, but then they approached us, what do you think about doing Howard Thompson? He's like, how do you, how, you know, how do you feel about doing your Sylvain? And we were like, kind of cool and we just listened to it and we just went into rehearsal and came up put together our own arrangement and fucking and we thought it turned out great so it was, yeah i mean it was fun well, it was yeah. fun to do it it was fun to do it so well it's a good song i don't ever cover it so it had there's like a heavier more emotional version of it even more fun because you know you hear songs like, like <laughs> in the 70s or the 60s and you're like that's a good song 
kind of wouldn't suck to be a little heavier, have some more guitar in it. Like it's got a great exactly. melody. So oh, everything's like, got to be a little heavier. Right. So it's got, so <laughs> it's, it's a good song, but you put a little turbo, a little, little turbo in it to kind of like, you know, raise it up a little bit so you can jam out to okay. it, you know. But I get thing with the alternative thing and me hearing things change is, is one of the things for like, you know, people don't let you, a band change, you know, you're like, I'd be like a rock band between the first two or three albums. But then you, as music changed, you kind of took a different direction also. You started going more, like more industrial and techno. -y. And then I was, yeah, I was learning shit too. I was like, that's the way I've always been. I always learning stuff. When we were doing whipped, I was learning. I was, that's how I, got, I had got my Mac during wake me when we went yeah. in to do wake me we went to do the album cover for it and they had a pink box system that's what it used to be before photoshop and all that yeah. shit and they were had that thing and our logo and they're moving it around and changing the color we we're just like holy shit this is magic <laughs> and then when fucking but when not that later that year 89 I got my Mac, my first Mac with Photoshop, and I could do all that stuff they were doing yeah. on a million dollar paint box system. I'm like, this is just a game changer. And then it was like, then all the, then there's music incorporated into that computer with sequencing and pieces of gear that samplers. And I just got, yeah, this is just more sh tools. You know, it's like well, having more good, like, like your guitars, there's just, more stuff, more more things to make cool sounds with. And that's that's how I got it. And then like my roommate that turned me on to the cure and, and Bauhaus and you know my old buddy from San Diego from when we were kids and stuff and Lynette turned me on to ministry and skinny puppy. And then yep. from that it led to pig face. Pig face, pig face yeah. And, and nine inch nails. And it's like I end up being in pig face too. So it was like that's insane. The amount of people that's that that there are more people have worked on pig face probably than <laughs> than have been in LA guns, I guess. I can't think of anything else that oh no, guns. exactly. Not <laughs> me. They, the no, I'm not sure about that, but I don't know. It's pretty close. I think more people have been in LA guns than that's like, pretty that's, that's some amazing version. <laughs> it's good. But if people actually go and look up Pig Face, look at the artist that has been in it. It's, oh, I it's know. like a it's, it's like a who's who of just because every note. year it changed up too as well. You know, they changed it kept a bunch of people for a while, but then it's just Martin, which is everybody just yeah. the world got smaller, so everybody got more access. Came FDM, and, like you just name. I mean, obviously I'm talking some people, all those you, guys. People, and, well, the people that would know like listen to us, but I mean if you if you're really into the scene, you you read those names, you'll be like blown away who's been on some of those, you know. Oh, I know. And I got to be friends with all of them, too. Like, most of all those people just... I had moved to Chicago and stuff, too. So it was like, I just needed a break after the whole electro shit and the faster. I just needed to clear my mind. Yeah. Me and my buddy, Mike, that turned me on the puppy. We He was like my brother. Yeah. We lived together in Hollywood. I met him, known him since San Diego. We moved. He moved up with me and we moved to, then we moved to Chicago together. He's the one that did artwork for his name's Mike Wilmot. He did uh he did the artwork for Skinny Puppy. He did our cat. He did Motley's Alice Fiend. He did a lot of bunch oh, wow. of stuff for, for Skid Row and stuff, but he's always been my buddy since the beginning. And we lived together in Hollywood and Chicago. He st ended up staying there. I came back because I got made I'm a West Coast guy, so I, I after a while, back. too much for you. He stayed there another five years. I think I'm just. Gonna... I got there. I was like, ah. summer's like just hot. It's like it's killer for like a week on both ends. I mean, I I love Chicago. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like weather wise. I thought I'm moving there. I was gonna be like Seattle and, and... well, always raining. I went to Seattle. Just, just, once just in my life. cooler just... in the seventies in the summer, and it goes from freezing fucking cold to hot and humid in chicago you got like a day of spring and a day of fall see but, i can't do that i did i did down south for college and then from new england i was telling you and then well, um, we have at least seattle's, we have four seasons seattle's like connecticut seattle's like yeah, connecticut. four seasons at least sort of ish sometimes they're little, yeah it depends but i mean you roughly going down south though it was like it, was, it killed me i'm like first i got there i'm like this is awesome and then like the second year there i'm like I gotta go up to New England. Oh, yeah. I, I, it's killing me. I need my seasons. I need to take a break. It's relentless. Yeah. I like I like California because I like being able to ride my bike. I'm a motorcycle rider, so I 
I love being, I don't like, I want to have to put my motorcycle away for eight months. You know what I mean? Nah. That'd be frustrating. I'm yeah. not living anywhere with that. Especially I got a woman that's like, fuck no. <laughs> it ain't going where it's cold. No. So, well, at this point, you, you, don't, you don't need Florida, to. You know, kind of probably Florida, but. Oof. That's probably that's the plan, but that's so humid. But it's in the bugs there, and it's just so much going on. Oh, I know, I know. We'll see. It's hard. It's hard. Um, so obviously for a while, then then you you guys did the sound where you came back and did, and did, did uh, that's where Scap, but you did like just some remixes. You kind of mixed the uh, that was that together. That was just that was just for Cleopatra. They wanted they wanted a new faster. Rec- I've known Brian for many many years since the old days of faster before we got signed and stuff. He was, I met him, I used to work at Retail Slut on Melrose and he used to do, he used to bring in and sell bootleg t-shirts to Helen, the owner. He mm-hmm. was a t-shirt maker, Brian, Brian Pereira from Cleopatra. And he started, so I've known him since that, back then. He made a shirt of us that I gave him the artwork for it. And it said the itch you can't scratch on it. It had like a kind of stonesy, but a girl's, crotch area with a hand and and it said but instead when i got them uh, we opened up the box and it said the itch you can't scrap so so we're like <laughs> these ain't gonna work i'm not paying for these <laughs> but i've known brian that long but he wanted a faster record i wasn't going to do a new faster record for for cleopatra or for anybody right then i wasn't in that state of mind i was doing newly dead shit then and things were taking off we were getting ready to get a, go on tour with danzig and we we were packing everywhere we were playing and it was really good but uh i'll go i'll do a remix record for you and i had greg and i got greg to do a, one of the mixes we, i had some other friends work on some stuff too and uh that's what that was that was just a remix of old tracks i you know we ripped apart a few songs and redid them differently. Just it was just for fun doing a different version. The other ones are there. You know what I mean? Right. These were all like kind of dance. Most of them were like dance mixes and stuff like that. So that's what that was. I wasn't that wasn't a intended to be any. And it was weird, like getting some of the emails. Oh, fashion pushkin. What the hell is this shit? It's like it wasn't supposed to be anything but that. You know what I mean? It wasn't supposed to be a right. new versions. It was just remixes. So I think there's a lot of Cleopatra had, had a lot of bands doing those remixes like around that time. And it well it made sense because you were actually in a band that was doing that kind of music. So it didn't feel like it was Yeah, yeah. No, I I I go, I'll do a remix because we we're already recording stuff. Right, and, right. Right. and I was like brought other friends of mine in that were part of Cleopatra and stuff like that too, as well. So it was fun. It was just that's what it was. That and then it was like then we got offered to go back out as faster and i'm like i'm just everything was just starting to take off for the newly dads but i'm like oh that could be fun like, i'll i'll do it but i'm just gonna mix it too because they're both my bands i started right. the original faster i started the newly dads and i fucking i put everybody in both those bands together and wrote the songs in both those bands so i'm gonna go we're gonna do faster we're gonna do it this way and i just brought greg and brent back into the mix and I would have brought Eric, but I had Danny, and Danny was like kind of like almost like my best friend. So it's like I'm not <laughs> I just not think kicking about Danny out no. for Eric because no. Eric. Last I dealt with Eric because I had kicked him out for doing the same thing Mark did. Had heroin sent to him, FedEx. You know what I mean? Oh, so I was like, I'm not really. going to kick Danny out for Eric, even though you know I still still like you know still like Eric. Right. You know he's still he's still one of my brothers you know always will be but that was if i'm gonna do not the newly dads which is my new shit that i'm everything's kicking ass right now and we we're getting ready to start shopping stuff we were recording stuff and getting ready to tour so and it was just a different chapter in my life and it was fun but if we're gonna do that i will bring greg and brent back and greg lasted part of the tour and, and then went home but uh but I talked to him like a few days later and it was good. Tracy Guns filled in on Greg's spot for the because we were out with LA Guns on that on that run. So Tracy, because Tracy's been my buddy since before I Foster Pussy Cat, you know, it was one of my first runs in LA. So oh, wow. he filled in. And even after LA Guns was done, we saw another week's worth of dates and Tracy stayed out with us and finished up the run with us. Yeah, that was cool. Seattle and Portland and stuff. So 
But yeah, that was interesting. And that was a combination of it too. Yeah, I mean, of, of that's what you started and, to run into. And, and Chad and Danny's been in the band with me ever since. Since, right? 2001 since fucking, something? Yeah, one. I mean, so they've been there. I mean, 22 years. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and, and I laughed when you said, uh, just this the Instagram, all the, all the clips. Oh, of, God. Of him on, of, of the. <laughs> I just started people going on Instagram. It's so it. funny with his little, his little commercials of the, of the next gig coming up. Such a fun, yeah. um, it's like guys. that pretty much when we're on the road every day on the bus. So it's like, it's just, you see that, you just get to see that little clip. Yeah. It's, Day he's long, a funny dude. From the from the time we get it to fuck up. Yeah. And... He's a funny, funny dude. And and so what's great is you were still carrying over, so you're still doing songs from from the newly dads, which is cool now when you play out. So it's like it didn't totally go away either. No, you know? and we'll probably do more. Just it's just a matter of just rotating stuff. But there's I I love the shit that I did in the newly dads. There are some really cool songs. It's just like I, you know, it's just part of my life. I yeah, you know, it's just shit I wrote that was I thought was you know cool, and it was just a different period of time with you know the early two thousands, and it was, but it was a it was carryover from pig face in the mid nineties, you know what I mean? So it was just like, and and then you 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 carried on even still the newer stuff now, feels like it has a little of everything in it. I it's um, just me because I just I. I, I it's like a paintbrush with certain colored paints. You're just gonna use some of the shit you like, and you go, oh, that song that would fit cool. That song, you know what I mean? So, who knows what's coming up? I got we got two new songs that were, you know, we've had we had uh, Nola and Pirate yep. Love, the Thunder's track, and we had uh, like a we ghost. did Ghost Ghost, ghost with the yep. re re-release of Pirate Love too, because we did it with Gold Robot. So. Yep. We got two new songs d- done. One's called Motorbike and another cover of Don't Change by uh, In Excess. See, another good time for alternative, the real, the original alternative music. Yeah, exactly. And those are done. They're just getting mastered now. So, and now I'm working on uh, the follow up to that. Now, it was all, it was pretty much done. But then, of course, I do what I do. <laughs> I go in and rip it apart. You know. The musically, it's done because um, we changed up some guitars. Sam, Sam Bam came in. We come up, came up with some di- couple different melody lines on the verses, and and I'm just like, ah, this is so good. Now I started thinking of other melody lines. Title's still the same, and the main line of the chorus is still the same, but the answers and some of the verse melodies are changing. So it's but but it's cool. It's 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 gonna be, be- way better. Well, you have a hot shot guitar player. I've had Sam on a few times. Actually, he's 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 going to be the new. Uh, it's incredible. But he he is. You know, all he has to do is keep the course now, and he'll be in the X amount of years. He'll be just he, you know legendary. I mean, right now he's just a hardworking, great guitar player. As far as I'm concerned, he's already legendary in my book. That's by by far. Yeah, I, I keep, mean, I, I'm keeping him around as long as I possibly can. I take is, advantage of it. I I wish I could take advantage of it more, but I got to keep up with. The shit, I could sit there and fucking program a bunch of shit, and just have play yeah. that all Sam, Sam stuff for decades to come. <laughs> and then if I'm not around, he's yeah, he's he's just gotta get all, all all done with him in there. Um, but was so actually, so you did two singles. You did two singles. Are you gonna be doing that thing where they like they, they like waterfall and you do like a bunch of singles and eventually you're gonna make it an album type of deal? Probably like waiting for it to be like. I, otherwise, if you waited for an album for me, you'd be waiting another fourteen years, and some people would be dead by the time they got it. Yeah, but didn't you, you kind of stopped though for a while, didn't you? You didn't, you didn't put any effort in for a while because you uh, had you know, a dispute with a label or whatever. You didn't. Well, there was some shit and a lot of drugs involved. But so, I was so, so you didn't write for a while either. Six and a half years now sober, so and and smoke free. That's pretty much the main one is cocaine and smoke free. So I wasn't really that much of an alky, but it's like, yeah, cocaine can be kind of hard, man. The drugs are just getting worse, you know. It's expensive too. Yeah, cigarettes are got as expensive as coke. (laughs) Cigarettes are. I don't have you looking. I spend more on cigarettes than I do on cocaine. I tell you that. That's that's real bad. I think the other joke was, was saying that they, nowadays, like either do cocaine or, or get your hair done. 
because he's too like, much to get a both on. <laughs> you just do a lot of cocaine, you're dead in a second. It's like, I'm so glad I'm sober now. Just it's, you can't even party without you see what they're doing now. They're fentanyl. mixing it with that. that, that well, yeah, yeah, you see, well, the fentanyl they're doing, uh, what's it called, trank or something? Where you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh I'm my so god, that is glad. insane. I'm, sober. I'm so glad I'm but they're mixing sober. it with everybody. Yeah, I saw that online last night. Like, I just haven't been in that world for so long, and I'm like, holy Toledo, man. People are, I couldn't even imagine that. Just, it, I, I, yeah. Like that. Staying like a zombie. Um, so uh, you would mention that you had a book too. You're working on a book. What's the deal with that? But he's like a book, like a biography, yeah, it's, a picture it's, book. Like, yeah, it's no, it's a book about me. It's through Rare Bird Tyson's yep. uh, lay, uh, his publishing company, Rare Bird, and uh, <laughs> Martin and Leaf are the writers. They wrote uh, did. Matt Sorm's book and stuff. They're really yeah. cool guys, but they're in Sweden. So it's like a matter of us, like, uh, we're going to, going to do a zoom call next week. And we, we met a couple of times in January when they were out here, we got together. So you're like Tracy Gunn's time, time zone, right? Yeah, for, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So, so it's like, yeah, we're, we're good for this day. How about you? And I'm fuck, I got to fly out for a show that, that weekend. I was like, that's not good. And then it's like, so hopefully we're getting together next week and after I get back from from our flyout gig and stuff, we'll get back on the horn of that. But yeah, we've been getting that together. Hopefully get that together maybe soon. So maybe in a year or two. Before I forget about what we already talked about. <laughs> it's like yeah. I hope you got your notes as far as I'm concerned to those guys. So I got a bunch of piles of shit right down here below here. This book stuff, and I'm just like, and I can't remember where I left off. <laughs> but oh, and every time I think of more stuff that needs to go in there, so that's good. And I and I said I told him I didn't want to, you know, rush it. We'll we'll get it done. There's no no rush. I'm sober. <laughs> I'm not doing a lot of coking up crazy. It's awesome, Sean. Thanks. It was a it was Thank a you. pleasure. Take, Take care, care, brother. Bye-bye.